Welcome to the Gym Owners Business Podcast with Mel Tempest. The Gym Owners Business Podcast is proudly supported and sponsored by Thomas Plummer, MyZone, Creative Fitness Marketing, and All Smiles Creative. The Gym Owners Business Podcast is part of the Gym Owners Business Network, which is the industry's go-to online hub designed to better service the needs of fitness business owners. The Gym Owners Business Network is currently finalising foundation memberships, so if you're a fitness business that would like to gain valuable and extensive exposure to the Australian and global fitness industries, then head to gymownersbusinessnetwork.net to find out more. Well, good morning. It's Mel Tempest from the Gym Owners Business Podcast and Network. This morning, I'm speaking to Greg Doherty. Greg has spent a lifetime committed to improving the health and well-being of others. Welcome to the podcast, Greg. Hi, Mel. Thanks. Uh, thanks for the welcome. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm very excited today about our podcast because you've had an amazing journey in the fitness business industry. So, Greg, can you tell our audience today how your desire for travel and the passion for sailing led you to pursue a career as a boat builder? then pursued a business venture involving marketing that led to a successful career in the fitness business industry working with people such as Paul Check. Okay. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's been an interesting journey. We, uh, we lived on Vancouver Island in Canada and always had a love of sailing. And, um, you know, we just uh, worked our way up to get a, an ocean-going boat that we could uh, go sailing on and then we finally that came to pass our, our dream was fulfilled and we started cruising down the coast of North America and then sailed across to the Marquesas and Tahiti spent a year in Tahiti and had a baby on the way we already had one baby so we had another one on the way and um, then uh, we just kind of set our sights on heading to New Zealand because that seemed like a good place to get out of the hurricanes and so we arrived here, and I landed a job uh, boat building in in the Auckland area, and yeah, so that was uh, that was a bit of um, hard work, not a lot of money, but we you know we started gaining experience and loved New Zealand, and then um, <clears throat> one day we got a phone call, and my wife Nancy, one of her best friends in Canada, was on the line, and she said. Um, oh, my son, uh, Paul, is coming to uh, New Zealand. Um, would you be able to host him? Because he needs a place to stay. And, um, and we had known Paul since he was 12 years old. This is Paul Check, who some of your listeners may have heard of. And so um, when, when he arrived, he, we sat up all night and we were chatting and just talking about, you know, the years that had intervened since the last time we'd seen him. And and realized he was on an amazing journey of, of um, educating people in the fitness industry. And uh, the short part of the story is that he invited us to attend uh, his sessions that he was doing in Auckland, which were scientific back training, scientific abdominal training, and program design. And uh, so we accepted, attended, and it was um, it was a little bit out of our comfort zone, but we we kind of knew enough because we were associated with a few muscles in the body. <laughs> and um, then um, <clears throat> uh, we were, the most amazing thing was the, the, the participants of the course were from a broad spectrum of people involved in health, health sciences and the body. And they were sports medicine doctors, there was physiotherapists, there was um, massage therapists, acupuncturists, podiatrists, and this group of people called personal trainers, who back then, this was in 1994, um, no one knew what they were. They were a new thing in the New Zealand uh, industry and probably much for the world too. But So what impressed me was the depth of knowledge that was being uh, given out and how everyone was eating it up. It was just like, oh my God, this was light bulbs turning on all over the place. And, um, yeah, so long story short, after the event, we said, well, that's really nice, Paul. Thanks for inviting us. And uh, next time you come, uh, we'd be interested in, in helping you to promote uh, your courses. And, and so 
that's what happened. The next time he came, we became a promoter for his courses uh, and uh, in Australia as well, which we did for 16 years. So we uh, supported Paul Check's program for 16 years in Australia and New Zealand. And then um, <clears throat> along the way, because there was tools that people needed to use when they were starting to understand about functional training. See, functional training back then was a new word. No one, no one really had an idea what it was. Now it's more misused than than used properly, I would say. But uh, so anyway, there was a lot of tools and toys that people needed, and and um, so we started uh, importing Swiss balls and medicine balls and other tools and toys that. Um, People needed. So um, somewhere along the way, Paul had said, "Greg, you need to get in, in touch with uh, Tom Campanero and Total Gym because uh, I've worked with them for years, and um, they're really great people, and it's a product that I really like." So, well, we we did that, and so in um, in two, and we had been building up our business all the time uh, with with uh, selling functional type products and. Uh, uh, but then when we met with um, Tom Campanero from Total Gym, and he was a, he's a passionate person that he goes back a long way in the industry. He was one of the classic bodybuilders in, in 1974, along with Arnold and all the rest. So, um, you know, when he started telling me his vision of what Total Gym was and, you know, like what we were looking at at that time in 2000, well, basically it was 2002, sorry, correct that, uh, was a real... Uh, kind of it's almost like industrial uh, total gym. It was really quite rough. It wasn't. It wasn't anywhere near as as um, sophisticated as we have today. Um, but you know, Tom was telling me he says, "Oh, we're we're going to be launching this program in a couple of years. It's called Gravity, and it's uh, it's using a you know more modern uh, uh, evolved uh, total gym product." And it's going to be great, you know, and it, Tom's a very infectious person. So, you know, so that was good. So that that's where our journey started as distributors for Total Gym International. And, uh, you know, since then it's been, uh, you know, we were at the same time doing Paul Check education courses and we were doing uh, Total Gym when we launched, uh, 2004 when we launched the Gravity, we also launched an education program with that too called the Gravity, Gravity Education, and uh, it was great, and it's still great, and people are using that today. It's one of the, the best um, uh, new innovative ways of delivering fitness in the market. So um, let me see now. Where do we go from there? Well, Greg, well can, I, can I ask you, can I ask you, I mean, Paul Check, I remember entering the fitness industry, and he was just like, the God to, to learn to learn from. Can you tell me what was it like to launch him in Australia and New Zealand? How well was he received and his education? He was received very well. <clears throat> it's just, um, I mean, it was all new stuff in, in back in 1995, 96, up to 2000 or so. You know, and so we met a lot of really. Uh, good people that were attracted to his education and have since been, you know, branched out. So he's he's had an effect on the industry where he's taught people uh, skills and how to how to assess and um, and apply exercise in the correct format. I mean, one of the best expressions or bylines that he used was "exercise is the drug of choice." So, uh, like a drug, you use the right exercise at the right time for the client. Uh, in the in the amount that's needed, and you know that's a really good concept because a lot of people uh, they just they've got a lot of tools in their toolbox and they want to use them all at once. Whereas it's you need to be sophisticated about how you apply your exercise technology. So <clears throat> yeah, he's um, I mean he had tremendous influence. He, he went on to develop quite a few other courses, and then along the way the. The Czech Institute uh, evolved, uh, which was more advanced training. So it became, you know, like the top five to ten percent of trainers would would gravitate towards his training, and uh, you know, which is is good in a way. But it also there's a, about forty to fifty percent of the market that really wasn't um, 
taking up that opportunity. So, um, but the good thing about that is that most of his people that that worked with him went on to be presenters in their own right. And so there's a lot of people I can't off the top of my head think of think of them, but there's many people that um, are um, students of his who've gone on to become masters. So, so Greg, what I have to ask you this. What were some of the tools that Paul had and, and still does obviously have that you feel are missing in the modern market of personal trainers today? Well, when he first started out, the tools he had was a dowel rod, <laughs> a stretch band, uh, and a Swiss ball, and some medicine balls. That was basically it. And then, uh, you know, then he started using equipment like cable training systems, um, which uh, in the States, it was a company he was working with, I believe it was Hoist. Um, but when he came to New Zealand, uh, he sat down with one of the manufacturers here and shared his thinking on what a, a cable training system should look like. So uh, that was that was back in, that was 95 or 96. And so what happened is, uh, and we still sell these these products today. They're, they're, you know, they don't have all the bells and whistles with TVs and, you know, sensors and yeah. things like that on them. They're just a basic cable system, multi-position, multi-adjustable. You can take it to the top or the bottom so you can pull a cable at any height. And, you know, the, the I guess the Keystone product was uh, the Paul Check Triple Cross, um, which, you know, many functional training studios and gyms have. And, I mean, it's, you know, back in the day when, you were looking at um, cable training systems. They were fixed on the bottom and fixed at the top. And people did those kind of exercises, those um, lap, lap flies where they would stand and pull the cables together. Well, that went to a whole new level. And, and I remember when I was <clears throat> going to the gym because Paul got me interested in exercise and figuring how to do it. And uh, so I would go in and the Les Mills, the local Les Mills here had a triple cross in there and it was fantastic because no one knew how to use it. So when you'd go in, it was not being used. You could go in and play with it and do whatever you wanted. But it took about a year and then eventually people learned how to use it. They started attending courses and seeing what other people were doing with it and you couldn't get on it anymore. I think they bought another one as well. So. Okay, so it's a fairly fairly um, interesting story behind your relationship um, with Paul. I mean, he's done some amazing stuff with students, and the Institute is definitely something that today's personal trainers need to have a look at. So in 2011, um, you rebranded re uh, HQH Fitness, and you set forth with a new company direction that was serviced around service, innovation, and solutions. Can you just tell me a little bit about that? And then how you come on to launch, you know, your premier product line, the Total Gym Suite. Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, yeah, that's true. We, we did. Uh, one of my staff members was <clears throat> very good at marketing and, and product development and stuff. And so we, we looked at a rebranding, um, trying to get our brand out there. And uh, it, it was good. So we... Um, what was the second part of that question? So yeah, that's okay. So in 2011, you rebranded as HQ Fitness, and then you went on to become a company that was more based around service innovation and solutions. And then you also went on to um, focus more so on your total gym suite. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. <clears throat> well, that's exactly uh, correct. But just to back up a little bit, um, our business name that we we uh, put up in 1995, highest quality health and fitness product was, it was a statement of what we wanted to provide to the industry was the highest quality health and fitness products. And well, we, we wanted to put education on the end of that, but it got too long. So we just shortened it. And, um, you know, and then in 2011, we thought, well, we need to shorten this again. So it's a little bit more, um, you know, not so much of a mouthful. So then we changed it to HQH Fitness and we've been uh, promoting the name of HQH Fitness since then. Um, and, you know, our uh, solutions concept was to make sure that, you know, we could provide innovative products to the industry that um, would suit the market for functional training and things like that. So it wasn't for us 
we weren't really selling treadmills or or bicycles um, and things like that. You know, we were cable systems, weight weight uh, weights and uh, power cages and squat racks and that kind of stuff. And so it was, um, yeah, we we had kind of a niche market there. Um, but it overlaps with some of the other strength providers in the industry, so not a problem. They have since. I mean, the thing is, the influence that has had is almost every manufacturer is using concepts like Paul developed in the cable training systems that were developed uh, through a company here called Fitness Works. So, um, yeah, and how we uh, – well, 2011 – so backtrack a little bit. It was like 2000. Five, we launched uh, the Gravity Concept at uh, uh, Australian Fitness Network, and it was really um, great to see the reaction because we won an award for the best display uh, over 36 square meters or something there, which was not what we were trying to do. We were just trying to um, get customers to have a look at us, and so that that would work well to get our brand out there. So, uh, so we were. Uh, promoting what we call the gravity training system at the time, which is, uh, people call it GTS. And it was, uh, the education behind it was called uh, gravity training. And that was um, going really well. We had a lot of uh, uptake in the market. In 2010, Total Gym Commercial uh, uh, launched their product. And the interesting thing was, when we were promoting gravity and gravity training systems, some marketing person had told them, don't use the word total gym because it's got a stigma about the infomercial home market. And so that's what we did for that, that in period. Then in 2010, <clears throat> they relaunched with a new look, redeveloped product that's you know really the evolution of over 40 years of product development. And the marketing guys they had at the time said to them, said that uh, you should be using the brand Total Gym. You know, well, we weren't using it. So, but are you crazy? You got There's over, I think it was something like $50 million of brand equity in the name Total Gym and a million dollars a month being spent on promoting the brand Total Gym. So why would you not use it? So that's, um, that's where we went back to using Total Gym. And, you know, some people didn't like it at first, but they grow to get used to it. And then I think the thing is that, you know, what we have in, in Total Gym is almost instant recognition. There's no other fitness supplier in the industry that has that kind of recognition. If somebody goes Total Gym, they immediately have some kind of response. Um, we hope it's like, oh, yeah, they do home fitness and they have commercial fitness and they do medical rehab, which is really great. But no other brand on the market. You just think of some and just think like, well, if you say a brand, you know, the gym owners, they all know what it is, but um, the rest of the public have no idea what it is. So, um, I know, agree with that, Greg. I mean, everybody recognizes the brand Total Gym. Even when we first met, even I responded to you how I knew, I knew Total Gym. Um, can I just ask you, how many years... Have both yourself and Nancy been in the fitness business industry? Well, really, since 1995 when we started. I mean, so, that's, that's incredible, isn't it, really? Yes. <laughs> it's been it an exciting like, journey. I don't doubt that. Yeah, we, uh, we missed the sailing. We really enjoyed sailing across the Pacific and getting here. But then we had to, well, when we came to New Zealand, we virtually had just our boat, our yacht, 38-foot yacht that we had, and uh, not much else, a little bit of cash. And I had to start working as a boat builder um, full-time then and learned a lot of skills. And, um, I mean, one of the things I'm always um, happy with about boat building is it's a it's an industry where you learn how to problem solve. So, you like, if, if you've got to fix something, or you know, create something. You've got to think about think about it from start to finish, and that stood me really well in the fitness industry. And when we've got products on board, so if I look at well, product, um, you know, maybe something on the product isn't working as well as I think it should, um, and I would let my views known to them. And so I've always been kind of a, a influence for for Total Gym as to 
hey, when we're designing this, why don't we do this or why don't we do that? And I think uh, now the, the 2018 version of the Total Gym uh, uh, GTS, which we now call Encompass. Do we call it Encompass? The Encompass means it encompasses a lot of exercises. And you know, so everything. But what what they've done with that is um, put in a, a roller system that is really advanced from where we were ten years ago, and it means it's lower maintenance, uh, smoother running. Uh, you know, it should be because everything we do is on an inclined plane, but everything is also on rollers. So we use rollers. Uh, so what we want is to have the best high quality roller that uh, doesn't um, create more maintenance and you know and gives a great product and so it's you know that's one of the things for me that I really love about Total Gym um, which has gone into second generation now by the way so Tom Campanero who was the founder has passed the reins on to his son Jesse who actually used to hang out with Paul Check's son Paul Check Jr., and they used to star. There was a video way back when um, on Swiss ball training, and the models in the video were Jesse Campanero and Paul Check Jr. That's so. incredible, isn't it? Really, <laughs> that's it's like full. It's like a, a, a full circle. And I have to say, I actually um, obviously came and visited your stand at Firelix, and <laughs> um, I did see some of your team working out on the equipment with the rollers. And I must admit. Um, your stand really stood out, and I really liked what I saw, especially with the, the avenue of rehab that you're going down. And it sort of leads me to the end of our uh, first episode of three today with Greg. Um, it's quite obvious that every year, you know, HQ Hate Fitness um, continues to have great new products and, and a great team behind them. And so going into episode two, um, we'll see... Zen Angelides join us as we discuss the future of the Australian and New Zealand fitness industry and what the, the future holds for Total Gym. Greg, it's been a delight speaking to you on the Coffee Podcast today. Your, your story is one that needs to be told more than once and I hope that you uh, have the opportunity later on to get up in front of the audience and tell your story because there's a lot more to HQ Fitness and Total Gym than people realize. And I thank you very, very much for your time today. Thank you, Mel. And thanks for the, the compliments on our stand. We continually try to improve what we show the public, but this year was a debut moment because we had the new black commercial line. In and it's great. And Zen's been busy already. He's been up uh, up in Queensland um, helping to get one of the new owners started with a, a Elevate circuit and uh, went very well. Another one coming up this month. So we're really looking forward to that. And we can discuss some of those things on our next coffee podcast when Zen joins us. But in the meantime, Greg, please do tell the audience who would like to get in touch with you, where is the best place to do that? Well, the best place, I mean, by email, my my personal email is gregd at hqh.com. Um, failing that, they can also call our toll-free number, which is 1-800-552-878, or they can check us out on our website, uh, www.hqh.com. I do apologize. Our website needs to be vastly upgraded, so not many. Some of the new products are being shown on there, but probably best to have a conversation and we can go through it that way i've had a look at your website greg and there's a lot of products on there that club owners can pop over and have a look at you'll be surprised actually at what greg and the team do distribute to clubs again thank you very much for your time today greg and i look forward to our next conversation thank you mel it's been a pleasure